to begin at the beginning. It is spring, moonless night in a small town, starless and Bible black. The cobble streets are silent and the hunched quarters and rabbits would limping invisible down to the slow black. Slow black. Crow black. Fishing boat bobbing sea. The houses are as blind as moles, though moles see fine tonight in the snouting velvet dingles. And all the people of the lulled and dumbfound town are sleeping now. Farmers, the fishers, the tradesmen and pensioners, cobbler, school teacher, postman and publican, the undertaker and the fancy woman, drunkard, dressmaker, preacher, policeman, the webfoot cockle women and the tidy wives. You can hear the dew falling and the hushed town breathing. Only your eyes are enclosed to see the black and folded town fast and slow, asleep. And you alone can hear the invisible starfall, the darkest before dawn minutely dew-grey stir of the black, damp-filled sea, where the Arethusa, the Curlew and the Skylark Zanzibar, Rhiannon, the Rover, the Cormorant, and the Star of Wales tilt and ride. Listen. It is night moving in the streets. The processional, salt-slow, musical wind in Coronation Street and Cockle Row. It is the grass growing on Saregib Hill. Dewfall. Starfall. The sleep of birds in milk. Look, it is night, dumbly, royally winding through the coronation cherry trees, going through the graveyard of Bethesda with winds gloved and folded and dew doffed, tumbling by the sailor's arms. Time passes. Listen. Time passes. Stand on this hill. This is Saregib Hill, old as the hills, high, cool and green. And from this small circle of stones, you can see all the town below you sleeping in the first of the dawn. Come closer now. You can hear the lovesick wood pigeons mooning in bed. A dog barks in his sleep farmyards away. The town ripples like a lake in the waking haze. Less than 500 souls inhabit the three quaint streets and the few narrow bylanes and scattered farmsteads that constitute this uh, small, decaying watering place, which may indeed be called a backwater of life, without disrespect to its natives who possess, to this day, a salty individuality of their own. Mr. Pew, schoolmaster, takes up the morning tea to Mrs. Pew. Here's your arsenic beer and your weed killer biscuit. I've throttled your parakeet. I've spat in the vases. I've put cheese in the mouse holes. Here's your nice tea, dear. Too much sugar. You haven't tasted it yet. Too much milk, then. Dear. Give me my glasses. Uh, no, not my reading glasses. I want to look out. I want to see. Now, in her spruced and scoured, dust-defying bedroom, Mrs Ogmore Pritchard, widow, 
sacrifice of Mr. Ogmore, linoleum, retired, and Mr. Pritchard, failed bookmaker, nudges in the ribs dead Mr. Ogmore, dead Mr. Pritchard, ghostly on either side. Mr. Ogmore, <gasps> Mr. Pritchard, <gasps> it is time to inhale your balm. Oh, Mrs. Ogmore. Oh, Mrs. Pritchard. Tell me your tasks in order. I must put my pyjamas in the drawer marked pyjamas. I must take my cold bath which is good for me. I must wear my flannel band to ward off sciatica. I must dress behind the curtain and put on my apron. I must blow my nose. In the garden if you please. In a piece of tissue paper which I afterwards burn. I must take my salts which are nature's friend. I must boil the drinking water because of germs. I must take my herb tea, which is free from tannin. And have a charcoal biscuit, which is good for me. I may smoke one pipe of asthma mixture. In a good shed, if you please. And dust the parlour and spray the canary. I must put on rubber gloves and search the peak for fleas. I must dust the blinds and then I must raise them. And before you let the sun in, mind it wipes its shoes. Now the town's half over with its morning. The mornings busy as bees. The women scratch and babble. Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard! La dee da! Got a man in Bilth Wells! He's got a little telescope to look at the booze! Willie Lily said! Remember a first husband needed his telescope? He used to look at them and dress into the keyhole! And he used to shout, Tally ho! But Mrs. Ogmore was a proper gentleman. Even though he hanged his collie. See Mrs. Butcher Bynum? She said Butcher Bynum put dogs in the mince sack. Go on, he's pulling a leg! Don't you dare tell her that there's a deer! Oh, she'll think he's trying to put it off, but he did look at her local body now and go out too lazy to go back with Mrs. Ogmore. Garbage in the water! Keep the company empty! One for the daytime, one for the night! Men are brutes on the quiet! Paham my dictatorum of Anoy, Antlen with la guide on thee, Athredia tirionum of Anoy, Hebrid or Thangweledi. Miss Price. Dressmaker and sweet shopkeeper dream of her love. Tall as the town clock tower, Samson syrup, gold maned, whacking thighed and piping hot, thunderbolt based and barnacle breasted, flailing up the cockled with his eyes like blow lamps, and scooping low over her lonely, hot, water bottled body. Mr. Mark Edwards. Oh, I am a draper mad with love. I love you more than all the flannelet and calico, oh. candlewick, dimity, crash and merino, to soiree, creton, crepon, muslin, poplin, ticking and twillin the whole cloth of the world. I have come to take you away to my emporium on the hill, where the change hums on wires. Oh, throw away <laughs> you little bed socks and your Welsh wool knitted jacket. I will warm the sheets like an electric toaster. I will lie by your side like the Sunday roast. I will knit you a wallet to forget me not blue for the money to be comfy. I will warm you a heart by the fire so that you can slip it in under your vest when the oh, shop is closed. Mavanoi, before the mice gnaw at your bottom drawer, you will say... Yes, Mog! Yes, Mog! Yes! Yes, yes! The sunny, slow, lulling afternoon yawns and moons through the dozy town. Captain Cat. The retired blind sea captain at his window, thrown wide to the sun and the clipped seas he sailed long ago when his eyes were blue and bright, slumbers and voyages, year ringed and rolling. I love you, rosy prober, tattooed on his belly. He weeps as he sleeps and sails, and the tears run down his grog-blossomed nose. One voice of all he remembers most dearly. Lazy, early rosy with the flaxen thatch speaks to Captain Napping Cat alone. What seas did you see, Tom Cat, Tom Cat, in your sailoring days long, long ago? 
I'll tell you the truth. Seas barking like seals, blue seas and green, seas covered with eels and mermen and whales. What seas did you sail, old whaler, when, on the blubbery waves between Frisco and Wales, you were my bosun? As true as I'm here, dear, you land lover, Rosie. You cozy love, my easy as easy, my true sweetheart. Seas green as a bean, seas gliding with swans in the seal barking. What seas were rocking, my little deck hand, my favourite husband in your sea boots and hunger, my duck? My whaler, my pretty sugar sailor, with my name on your belly when you were a boy long, long ago. <laughs> I'll tell you no lies. The only sea I saw was the seesaw sea with your ring on it. Lie down. Lie easy. Let me shipwreck in your thighs. Knock twice. Jack, at the door of my grave and ask for Rosie. Rosie, Robert. Remember her. She is forgetting you. The earth which filled her mouth is vanishing from her. Remember me. I have forgotten you. I am going into the darkness of the darkness forever. thoroughfare of dusk, and dusk and ceremonial dust, and night's first darkening snow, and the sleep of birds drift under and through the live dusk of this place of love. Laragib is the capital of dusk. Dusk is drowned forever until tomorrow. It is all at once night now. The windy town is a hill of windows. And from the larruped waves, the lights of the lamps in the windows call back the day and dead that have run away to sea. The thin night darkens. A breeze from the creased water sighs. And the streets close under milk 